All right. Oh, it's on. Hey, uh, I got to run and grab one more thing. Um, but if nobody's here while you're here anyways, part of the point that I want to make is this. So um, listen to this speaker as I get up and how far you can hear me walking away. This is on the privacy issue. All right. So I'm just going to use my regular talking voice right now and I'm leaving my office. I'm walking through the hallway. I'm all the way in the kitchen. Remember, this is about privacy. I'm in the kitchen. I'm in my refrigerator with the door open, facing completely the other direction. Can you guys hear me? I know you can on Facebook Live videos. People can hear me talking all the way up in the bedroom from where I left them in the office. So that's kind of a privacy issue, maybe. Could you hear me the whole time? Anybody want to chime in and tell me if they heard that? I was three rooms away getting some uh, kale blazer product placement. Um, yeah, this is what I do to try to stay healthy. Could any of you guys hear that? When I was all the way in the kitchen? That was part of the point that I was going to make about privacy issue with your Zoom videos. Um, should I do that issue first? Let's finish with that issue. Let's talk quickly first about what's going on in Lyle. This 20, 30 minute video is all I'm going to do. Um, and I'm not going to get into too many details of our planning, zoning, and commission and all that. But I want to encourage everybody who's watching, everybody who's participating, um, to participate more in their local government. It's more important than national government. It really is. I've learned that. Um, sometimes during like this COVID virus, um, you'll see where crossover happens. Like, uh, you know, we've got to deal with our state government now and our federal government in order to get funding and um, to follow these certain rules and shutdowns and stuff. But for the most part, your municipal government runs separately than that. Unless you're talking about getting grants for bike paths and all that stuff. You know, we should be able to stay away from huge... Um, huge big topics. Hey Raza, you said it's clear as a bell. Were you on when I was in the kitchen talking? Could you hear me in the kitchen? I'm going to wait for your reply. You heard me all the way when I was in the kitchen. That's crazy, man. How many devices do you guys have in your house? You know, I'm not a conspiracy theorist guy or whatever, but just keep it in mind. We got devices in our house like that are picking up your recording from all the way in the kitchen when they're on. So, if, if you tap someone who is watching, I think you can invite them to join in. I don't think so, Jen. I tried it the other night. I'll try it right now. I can pin that comment. I can delete your comment or block you. I can't get you to join in like that. But there is going to be a way. I was, I was doing some research on that so we could have a dual conversation. I'd love to talk to you about this, Jen. We, had some issue, we, we, we talked about some issues related to Zoom videos and, um, you know, what's going on in the background here? You know, teachers are having to talk to uh, students, parents, and we're inviting people to record what's going on in our home. I'm doing it right now, but I'm aware. I, I'm assuming that there's no privacy necessarily in this situation, you know. But uh, anyways, I got off track on that. I want to talk a little bit about the Lyle stuff, what's going on to keep people informed, just so you can see how some of this plays out. So we had a school in Lyle, Tate Woods, lots of the guy, lots of people we went to. There was three elementary schools, Tate Woods, Sheezer, and the Meadows, and we'd all meet up in the sixth grade junior high, and um, now it's not like that anymore. Lyle, we built one awesome, fantastic elementary school, huge supporter of that. Lots of people were against it. I'm going to be real clear. I think it was a fantastic idea. I would even go so far as to say it might be time for a new junior high school one day. Um, and, uh, you know, we need, a, we need the best places to educate our children. Um, that said, you know what, maybe school changes after this, though, too. Um, and everything becomes more of a distance learning. I don't know. But anyways, Tate Woods School operated for 40 years. They have a parking lot across the street that was there for 40 years. And... Um, Currently, it's been coming for planning and zoning because it's not needed anymore with this new school. So the new school is built, and this place has been sitting vacant. 
And Tate Woods Elementary School has been offered to be purchased by a company, a business called Kindy Academy, I believe they're called. And I think they operated out of the Old Meadows School for a while as well. Um, so really they're just asking to run a private school out of what was once a public school. And it seems that some zoning commissions are making it more difficult on the private industry than it was for the public industry, in my opinion. And I don't know why that would be, but they want that parking lot to be turned into 34% of it needs to be removed and turned into a, a permeable uh, material. Because one of the neighbors says that in the last five years, he has experienced some flooding. But he's also admitted to changing some landscaping himself. Um, so basically what they're doing is we're, we're making the, this other company, th this business that's trying to come to Lyle, go through um, energy and expenses and efforts that... If I'm not mistaken, there wasn't one complaint about that parking lot causing flooding issues to any properties at neighboring prior to this new small business that wants to come in and start a private school. It's a, what do they call them? Montessori schools? So um, that's coming before our committee of the whole for a discussion, which is going to be on a Zoom video. And again, I'm gonna, we're going to be invited to our house, into your home to... That's kind of why I toured everybody the other day through my stuff. You know, this is what's on my shelf. My grandfather's flag. It's a, it's a pipe for pipe tobacco. You know, there's a question here too. Like I've got up a sign that says, Lyle loves our heroes in scrubs. And I paid for that with my political campaign uh, money. I called the Illinois State Board of Elections, checked the uh, Illinois compiled statutes. I can't remember offhand which one it was. But... Uh, oh, I think it's ILCS 59-8.10 for, uh, it's not under prohibited expenditures. And I went through it with uh, Tom down at the Illinois Board of Elections. So thank you, Tom. That was awesome. Um, and so the question would be, am I, if I broadcast from the Zoom video tomorrow, am I in a violation if I leave that sign, which is paid for by a political, my, my campaign fin financing, um, which can be found at the Illinois Board of Elections for anybody who's interested. Specifically, the person who filed a complaint with me with the Illinois State Board of Elections because I didn't state that the last time. So really, and I appreciate your guys' effort to try to just make me, you know, bring me down in some way possible. Uh, we, got it, we got it figured out. And once this COVID thing is, is figured out, I apologize if I accidentally didn't put where my funding can be found. It's at, you, you can find all campaign financing at the Illinois State Board of Elections website. Um, so you can be clear on expenditures and where receipts come from and all that. So tomorrow at this Committee of the Whole, they're asking us to pass this thing that went through planning and zoning. I think it passed 5-2. And they're saying by August 31st of 2022, this private school that wants to operate underneath the exact same existing building, the existing parking lot that has been there for 40 years, they're going to make these people spend 20, tens of 20 thousands of dollars to, to fix, to change this parking lot, this perfectly good normal parking lot that's been there forever. Now, it's in R2 zoning and that... It's not zoned. It does need a special variance. But those variances weren't ever applied for for the public school that was there. So it's questionable why you want to make people go to such efforts to operate under the same real situation that you had there before, just the difference between a private school and a public school. Um, so that's what we're going to be talking about tomorrow. Tune in. I think that's at 7 o'clock. You can watch our live village board meetings uh, locally on channel 10 uh, if you're Comcast. 99, I think, if you're, what is it, Uverse, AT&T Uverse? Is that what's nine, channel 99? Or as always on uh, our YouTube live stream. All right. I haven't shaved my beard yet. My COVID beard is getting long. Someone said it was scary the other day. I'm sorry. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, so I wanted to, to address again the um the privacy issues with oh hi dina boy i wish you would be part of this conversation did you hear what i was talking about with zoom videos and teachers and their expectations of a teacher 
um, to do Zoom videos. I, I wonder if it, is it supposed to go towards students now, to where a teacher is going to have to talk with a student, with students in the class through Zoom. Um, the question I have, and why I think that's interesting with, with you being a teacher, um, is I wonder what type of legal ramifications people could find themselves in. You know, um, are, are teachers being asked to monitor what's going on in the back of that house? You know, I, I heard rumors that teachers were being told to report anything that looks like it could be potential vi hazards for children in living situations, which of course we want to make sure that there's no domestic violence and, and the children are, are, are safe in their home and all that kind of stuff. But if you're asking a teacher to get involved in what is going on in someone's personal home by what they're videoing uh, in a Zoom meeting, I think you're asking to be before the Supreme Court someday. And that would really concern me. Um, how else can that be looked at? Let's just say someone takes a screenshot of this right now. Like you could be screenshotting me. And if you screenshot me and you're a teacher, what are you saying something that could be cut and clipped and shared and go viral on a meme of look at what my teacher said to me during this class. Now everything's being recorded. I don't think teachers get recorded in their classrooms on a regular basis, you know? So now, because I think Zoom records you, uh, we have always been mandated reporters. It's not any different. Teachers are mandated reporters Zoom is dangerous in itself. I don't know. Yeah, I mean, well, it's all dangerous, recording and stuff. Um, I I agree, but I also think it's here. I think Zoom is going gonna, is, is gonna to somehow be like Facebook. You're going to be able to have these conversations through Zoom. Um, but yeah, so there's a bunch of issues that come with that that I think people should be aware of. And I just wanted to talk to you guys briefly about it. As, as this thing progresses, they've shut down schools in Illinois for what the rest of the year and and again i'm so sorry to those seniors i've mentioned it before because i'm like such a sucker for wrestling if it would have happened during my senior wrestling season now i'd have been broken hearted so i apologize to all you seniors out there well the whole school eighth graders sixth the, the whole thing there's a lot of kids that enjoy going to school and participating in that stuff and uh it's a shame that they're not going to have that so sorry to you guys but this is, a, this is a new issue, and this is something that you need to pay attention to as parents, um, that you're bringing, you're offering these classrooms into, into your home. And I just think that it's something that should be talked about um, before people find themselves in trouble. You know? And especially, that was the example, if you weren't tuned in, I walked all the way to my refrigerator, having a conversation, here, we'll do it again now that there's, there's more people watching. So if you're on a Zoom video with your class and your family is in this back room having a conversation, uh, I'm talking at the same level of voice that I was talking to you guys before. My back is turned. I'm all the way in the kitchen. If somebody were to say something that, you know, maybe didn't sit well, with a certain group of people or something like that, you could find yourself in trouble, you know? And I think that's something that, that, that people need to, to pay attention to. I think you're gonna see it become an issue with teachers unions. Um, there's, it's gonna be a discussion because we need to know what is acceptable and what's not when it comes to bringing these classrooms into our homes, when it comes to the, the future of distance learning. Um, so, yeah, um, that's really kind of all I wanted to say, you know. Um, I told you guys on Saturday I was doing a little personal one, explaining some of the stuff on my shelf, and you know, and uh, what else went on this week um, that I liked? Oh, I shared a couple videos um, from some local people too. Jen Milanke, maybe I can even. Uh, We'll, we'll link it to her thing. She has this cool little video. She's a graduate of Lyle, 1994. And she's been doing these, um, I think she called herself a theater nerd. Um, whatever it is, it's fantastic. Check out the link. I'll put it below. She did these like four different things and did this singing and backing it up. And the facial expressions she did, it was fantastic. 
and I think it's been shared a couple hundred times now and she's in thousands of views and it should be viewed a lot more than that. It's fantastic work. Um, so I'll put a link to that below. Look and make sure you click on it. It's only a couple minutes. And it's a song that apparently theater people know, but she didn't tell me what I should look, what, where it would be from. So I'd like to, to see wherever that's from. Um, and Tommy Murray is from Lyle. Uh, he does a live stream of his drumming. He's an amazing drummer. And uh, well, I shared his. He's, a, he's in a Tool cover band, and he's in a band called Siberium, I believe. And man, can he... Can, can he play? You don't have to be a huge fan. He, it's heavy. It's heavy music. But just to see the talent that he's doing, and and share. And I think he had sixteen thousand some people uh, watch that video. And there was five hundred people, three hundred and fifty some people watching it live. And uh, man, it's 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 really slick. So I'll share a couple of his links. Make sure you're watching him. I think he's doing them every Saturday night at like eight, 8 p.m. Tom. Um, Anyways, I'll put a link to that too. I'll try to remember to share that stuff. I love to promote local people and what they're doing. Um, there's too much negative in this world all the time. Like, let's move forward. Let's help people. Let's, uh, you know, let, let's help them achieve and succeed the success they can. If we can do that through these social media outlets now, um, like what they're doing, then, then I want to help in any way I can, even if it gets them five more views. You know, maybe the right person will see it that shares it and it gives him a future job. Tom could pick up with a different band or Jen could end up, you know, I think she's on Broadway or something. It's really cool stuff. So, um, yeah, that's really all I was saying. I'll put those links to the bottom. I really wish this is something that I could have a conversation with. You know, it's hard to read the comments. People don't really comment as much, but um, they should. What is this? I appreciate the conversation, though. It's always good to... Yes, we need to really think these things through. That privacy issue is something that needs to be... Um, it it needs to pay, be paid close attention to. What it's... Oh, I, thanks, Art. <laughs> Arturo. Um, yeah. So... One day, we'll use that Zoom, the dangerous Zoom, which it probably is, to uh, have a conversation and maybe I can have a teacher or somebody who's experiencing this um, with, with the, what the Zoom videos are and uh, we can have a little conversation about that and you can point out where I'm wrong. You know, Same with the planning and zoning thing. I don't know. It just seems weird to me that you want to make it, put, put such limitations on somebody who wants to come in. And, and if someone sent me a, uh, a message saying that with the school sale of what is it, two or three million dollars, it will reduce your school. This is why the community needs to pay attention. It's, it could potentially reduce your school um, taxes by two to three hundred dollars annually, just the sale of that school. And it's been held up for however long because we're going to suddenly decide that these people have to tear up their parking lot and put in and, and put in uh, permeable paver bricks at what kind of cost? just so they can operate a school in the building that has already been operating a school for 40 years. Uh, unless I'm missing something, that doesn't make much sense to me. So watch it on the planning and zoning, or watch it on the committee of the whole meeting tomorrow. Um, I'm working tomorrow. I'll probably be racing back to do this, or I'll be doing it from like my truck or something like that. We'll see how good Zoom works like that. But uh, yeah, anyways, thanks for watching. If uh, you guys think anything that... You know, when it comes to this later, post it on there and we'll talk about it again later. All right. Appreciate y'all. Love y'all. Um, watch out for your privacy. Don't give it up because we're scared. You know, it's been... Hey, that's... Real quick. Are you scared? I don't get scared. This COVID thing, you know, I mean, it's, it's caught me a couple times on my heels. A little scared. You know, it's confusing. It's new. But I don't... I'm not an anxious person. Um, I think it has a lot to do with my faith. I'm confident in my faith and I, you know, that's solid for me. And so I know what my eternal existence is. So I don't have a big, I don't get a lot of fear. Um, but I know that there's a lot of people that don't share that same type of faith. And I'm not saying my faith is right. You know, it's, it's, it's what I practice. It's what I study. 
and I study it a lot, if anybody wants to talk about that sometime. Um, but it's scary stuff out there for people. And I don't want you to be scared. I hope that I can do something to um, help you if you are, if you're feeling anxious about this. I think we're going to start to see, I think we're going to start to see uh, communities open up again. You know, it, there's, it's going to be rolled out a little bit slower, um, but we still do. Man, we need to be careful. I read, I think David Rita made a post today. It said something like people are using 97%, this 97% rate of death to illness or whatever. And then he pointed out that there's 330 million people in the United States and that would potentially be, what's the math, Dave? Nine million people? And then he broke it even further down to say that would be eight out of the 300 people that you circulate with on a regular basis that you would have to be willing to accept could pass away. So let's, um, let's stay focused on this a little bit longer. You know, I think it's going to be coming out. We're going to be coming out of it soon, uh, the next month or so. Um, but enjoy it. I already started thinking today. I'm like, boy, once this is over, I'm really going to wish that I would, that I was sitting at home out today in the sun and the weather that we had today. You know, it was uh, it was a pretty nice day. I know it's Sunday, but anyways, uh, be careful out there. Good luck. Um, if you need anything. Oh, that's another thing. Man, I'm, I keep trying to leave and I don't leave. Um, I made a post that, um, that there was a donation from Eastern Accents. Um, they make bedding locally. Uh, I'll, I'll put their link down there too. They do bedding. They manufacture here in the United States for the most part, I think. Um, and they turned it into making masks. And I contacted them and asked them if they would send, if, if they were they were making a thousand masks a day, and they sent a box to uh, me at the village at Village Hall, and we got it in our village manager's hands, and they are distributing, um, say PPE protection for our staff and public works, and all that, and um, that's awesome. So thank you very much to Eastern Accents for doing that. The village of Lyle is forever grateful for that and um, the least I can do is promote you guys I'm not a big betting <laughs> aficionado so I uh, don't know much about it but I'm happy to share that website and I hope all of you people from Lyle that are looking for those kind of products that um, especially made in the USA uh, look for the made in the USA thing on Eastern accents and um, you know order from them you know if you if you need those new things because they helped us here at the Village of Lyle, so we should return the favor and um, try to uh, buy that. Hey, Ryan Parsons, why don't you go get a guitar and learn how to play G, C, D, and E? Because I heard you singing the other day, and it was pretty good. I think you should put it to a guitar. <laughs> All right. And uh, my dog is sitting here staring at me. So, want to say hi, Eli? Come on. Come on. Yeah, Look at say turn around. <laughs> there he is. Get out of there. You don't like that vegetable juice. Okay, get down. All right. Um, yeah, man, I wish there was a Zoom video. Like, I wish we could connect so we could have a conversation about some of this stuff. You know, what's up, Damien? Haven't seen you in a long time. I see you got some kids that are swimmers, just like you were. That's awesome. Um... So I like this, and I'd love to be able to have conversations with people that know more than I do, because really, all I have the ability to do is turn this thing on and start talking about some of the stuff. And if you want to talk about certain things, I'm, I'm fully capable and educated in those conversations, but I would love to have people who actually have experience with these privacy issues um, to where we can talk the actual legality of it. Um, I know more about it because I've studied a little bit of grievance procedures. I took some online classes at the University of Illinois. Um, actually, I'll tell, this, I'll tell you a story. <laughs> so I was at Local 150's training facility. It's an awesome training facility. I was a huge supporter of that. It moved us right into the future. Um, and, and it's overloaded. I mean, prior to the COVID, 
but it's overloaded. We have high tech training facilities for cranes, tower cranes. We have indoor training facilities, all kinds of stuff. And we offer all kinds of classes on labor history. And um, I took a class and I basically just didn't want to go outside because it was so cold. And uh, I had already had all my crane licenses and stuff, but I'd like to spend a lot of time down there and, and learn from anybody I could when I had time on weekends or whatever off. So I would always go to our training facility. I got my commercial driver's license down there. Um, it was It's a super beneficial place. Well, this one day, I was in there and I didn't want to go outside. It was like minus two in February or something like that. Wind chill like 30 below. And so I took this class, Labor History, and we started talking. And the the teacher, who I just thought was like some old dirt hand that was now teaching Labor History, interested in it like myself. So he said, well, what do you guys know about Labor History? And uh, write it down so I kind of have an idea who we're teaching. You know, I guess this is what teachers do. And I wrote down, he said, you know, who do you think is the most important influential people in labor and, and what they've done to civil rights or whatever. And, you know, like most people, one of my first thought comes to one of the best human beings to ever walk the earth, Martin Luther King Jr. Uh, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Um, but I make some jokes about the fact that Moses never gets any real attention for being this labor leader. You know, he's certainly the first, you know, I mean, we were talking about written in the book of Genesis, which is from the Torah. I mean, how many years ago was that? And he freed the Jewish slaves from Egyptian pharaohs. He parted the Red Sea to do it. You know, how, does, how come Moses gets, the, Moses gets the shaft, man? He doesn't get enough t credit for being this labor leader. You know, he, he, he freed the Jewish slaves from building Egyptian pyramids. You know, so that's how, so it ends up that the guy teaching the class, his name was Bob Bruno, and he's a professor at the University of Illinois. And he um, said that he wanted to see me after class, and he offered me, um, we ended up talking and meeting and stuff, and he ended up giving me this August Bernier um, Labor History Award, and it included a scholarship to the University of Illinois for... Um, to take labor history classes. So I took six classes at the University of Illinois online um, and did grievance procedures, global labor history, um, arbitration, all kinds of the globalization of our economies. And it was fascinating. I loved it. What a great program. And uh, I don't remember why I was telling you that that's what I was doing, that I took those classes. But anyways. That's what I did. That's another little part of who I am and 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 why I uh, am who I am. I think maybe I was talking about how it relates to our teachers and these these videos. And you know, we we want to make sure that we're protecting everybody's civil liberties when we're going through these Zoom meetings. Um, make sure that there's no violations. We don't want things to get caught up in courts and litigation over you know somebody doing something silly in the background of a Zoom meeting or something like that. So until we got that figured out, we should probably be careful what's in the background of our videos and stuff like that, if you're tuning into your classrooms with your teachers. So, uh, all right, I'm going to go this time for sure. That was a half hour. And uh, really, without anybody else to talk to, i got nothing else to say. So, again, take care, love you, be safe, and... Uh, Stay, stay inside for a little bit longer. Let's keep this going. Make sure that we don't have to do this again. That would be the biggest tragedy, is if we all go back, and then all of a sudden, in December, when everybody wants to go out to malls and Christmas shopping and doing all that stuff, and it's cold and flu season, and, and now everybody's wondering if they've got the sniffles even more, or if it's COVID, or, you know... Let's do this one time <laughs> and then and then get back to normal instead of doing this again come Thanksgiving. You know, that's the one thing for sure. I want to be with my family at Thanksgiving. I want to be at my with my family at Christmas. And if we don't play our cards right with this right now, we could go back and we might get 4th of July together, but 
if it if it pops up and and the numbers go crazy again, we could end up be doing this in in November and December, and I don't think anybody wants that. So uh, let's buckle down a couple more weeks and make sure that we get this thing squashed. All right. Take care. Love you guys. Call me. Text me. I'll get, I got those signs. I got 25 more of them or something like that. Maybe I'll go deliver some right now. I got six different people that asked me for one since I posted that last one. So if you want one of these, um, if you want one of these little signs here, it's reversed, but it says Lyle loves our heroes in scrubs. And I got my little uh, Elif political emblem. <laughs> So I'm going to go right now. I'm going to hang up with you guys, and uh, I'm going to go deliver a couple of those signs. So uh, text me, private message me with your address, and I'll go pop one in your yard if you uh, want to show your appreciation to all our, our doctors and nurses and hospital workers. All right? So uh, thanks again, everybody. And I'm going to talk you guys out so you can realize how serious this privacy issue is. I'm going to walk into the kitchen and I'm going to put down this uh, cam blazer. Unbelievable that you can hear this, right? Man, privacy these days. Got to protect it. We're going to have to put up that Jefferson quote that we see. You know, those who will give up security, freedoms for security deserve neither, I believe. All right, later.